welcome back. Today I'm on location here at Fort Ancient Earthworks in Nature Preserve and it is a very beautiful day out here. Um, peak fall color right now is in full effect. Um, you can see it's just a clear blue sky day. Um, just pretty much no cloud coverage at all. Um, that means the sun's out in full force as well. Uh, which means photos, you know, it could be a little bit of a toss up, but you know, I feel like it, the glistening glowing color on a lot of these leaves, like seen in the background here, uh, they're backlit and it just looks very, very beautiful. Um, it's pretty uh, breezy and blustery day, which means the leaves are falling, um, being shaked off the trees as we speak, uh, pretty much all morning. And that means that, you know, the foliage is going to go away, of course, as it all falls to the ground, um, which makes the uh, peak color, you know, a little bit more limited, I guess, here. So Fort Ancient is a, uh, it's down in southern Ohio, and it's a series of earthworks, uh, namely like mounds and different just beautiful shaped earthworks and other structures. Um, that were either created or, you know, inhabited by the uh, Native Americans here. And so they lived throughout uh, the entire area in this region here, um, namely like Hopewell uh, Indians in particular. And uh, yeah, so I'm just out here. There's not too many uh, miles of trail to really hike at, um, but there's a couple miles uh, in total on different kinds of trails that are color coded um, and everything. But uh, for my first visit, um, I'm pretty much going to be uh, just hiking around and just seeing the beautiful views. Um, I know there's a couple of scenic overlooks um, coming up on the other side of the uh, um, where I'm currently at on the Stone Circle Trail over here. Um, so I'm really looking forward to seeing those as well. Um, but so, you know, I'm just here for the morning. Um, it's basically my first visit. Um, and besides the uh, couple, it was about a year or two ago, I think, I was out cycling um, down south this way and I actually found this place by accident um, because uh, right along the bike path was a breakaway trail um, that had a sign that said Four Ancient. And so I got really curious, you know, I just halted my brakes and uh, just checked it out simply and so I've been meaning to go back ever since and I'm really glad now uh, because it is very beautiful uh, time of the year of course beautiful weather I'm out here in some mixed woodland here and uh, just seeing all these beautiful you know just natural formations and structures um, as well and just you know simply learning about the history and everything um, that is involved and goes around it of course um, so there is a visitor center actually and that's where I started um, because there is an admission fee of about seven dollars uh, for one adult um, but it gives you access to the beautiful exhibit. It's um, multi-interpretive, um, has different uh, kind of like TV sets with different uh, just videos playing. It's got um, these dioramas and sculptures and stuff. There's a giant uh, mastodon skull. Um, it just overall is very, very cool uh, to see all that. And um, I felt like it was uh, pretty important, uh, especially before I started hiking and really hit the trails to actually uh, go through there and uh, learn more about the just the history and the topography of this region as well um, and it gave me a much more newfound appreciation and also of course knowledge to share with you in the video um, you know set forth here um, instead of doing it you know reversed of course um, so while I was in there I checked everything out and it's a really nice big exhibit um, lots of different things and cool stuff to see in there so yeah I'm gonna go ahead here and uh, hike around um, looks like I just finished the Stone Circle Trail. Um, it was not, I think it was about half a mile, so it wasn't really that long at all. But uh, I'm going to keep going here and uh, just see where the uh, trail basically takes me. Um, photographs, you know, they're going to be up up in the air, I guess, and uh, we'll see. But I'm hoping to maybe take a couple images here um, that I'll be satisfied with and I can edit and share in the video, of course. So let's go ahead and get started here. So far I've just been basically pre-scouting um, just because it is a new location to me in terms of photography of course. Um, so I'm just simply making my way around on this pretty blustery day here at the high winds and everything. Um, some clouds actually did roll in fortunately which is uh, pretty great so I might get some opportunities for some nice diffused light which would be nice. Um, but right now like I said I'm just hiking around uh, kind of following this, uh, this road over here uh, with some different pull-offs and everything. I'm just simply going on foot. We can just see these giant, um, kind of like almost like conical uh, shaped mounds um, as it just weaves you know, up and down. And apparently that's done to uh, coincide with the uh, winter and summer solstice. Um, so it's pretty neat to see that, how they're all just made, um, but very, oh geez, <laughs> giant tree branches fell. Um, it's pretty neat to see that how precisely they're all made here and constructed um, thousands of years ago. I've heard a couple of birds so far, fortunately, um, namely white-breasted nuthatch. Um, I've seen about three or four turkey vultures 
um, just soaring overhead. Um, they should be gone within a couple of weeks um, as they migrate down south uh, because they uh, don't really stay, you know, in the winter in Ohio. Um, that's more so for the black vulture, um, which is, uh, I would say, slightly lesser common um, than their turkey counterparts. Um, but I'd say the biggest surprise actually was uh, there's two red-headed woodpeckers, um, which are becoming a, they're a state endangered woodpecker. Uh, bird in Ohio and uh, I saw two of them engaged in a little scuffle as they were kind of descending slowly right in front of me basically within a few feet in front of me um, as they looked like they're fighting you know squawking calling and everything um, and then they just flew up to separate trees and made their way on so I don't know it was really cool to see that I didn't have the telephoto lens ready of course because it always works that way but you know it's just really neat to see that and uh, yeah it's a pretty cool moment um, so yeah, so here I am. Uh, looks like I make my way on this path here. Um, I'll let you know if I find anything of interest, but I think the photography is going to take a back seat for now um, until I actually explore the entire nature preserve here and uh, really get to see everything about it. So, and I'm really not in a hurry uh, because of that because the lighting is a little more harsher. So it's getting the bright high noon uh, spotty lighting as it is now. So I'm going to keep going here and uh, I will talk to you guys in a little bit. All right, so this is the exact same spot I saw about a year or two ago when I was out cycling, um, but it's honestly a lot different. It's completely different because that was uh, the middle of summer um, or mid late summer, I believe, and the greenery, the, the foliage was all just greened out and everything along the canopy and the tree line over here. Um, but now I'm just seeing it now. I think it's honestly more beautiful with um, just the foreground. All these trees are all laid bare, and then all the way in the background, you have this dotted uh, like muddy orange and browns and some bright red auburn like scarlet color and it's just like there's so much going on there uh, within the color palette and then over here you just got this greenery uh, it looks like almost like a golf course or something so like a you know, mowed lawn I guess but uh, but this is honestly very very beautiful um, and I think the thing that makes it for me is just these these bare white skinny uh, sycamores it looks like these white trees are dotting mainly the foreground prominently speaking but also you see them as they kind of meander off into the background or the midground um, so it's gonna be a really nice shot, I think. Um, it's probably gonna be a telephoto one because it is pretty far away. A wide angle shot really wouldn't look right, I believe. So I'm gonna try it out with the telephoto and uh, just experiment with vertical and horizontal and uh, see how basically those look as well. Um, but this looks really, really great and I'm really glad it came back here. Um, like I said, perfect time of year for this. And so I'm gonna take some shots here and um, I'll talk you through some camera settings as well um, as I go along taking them, of course. So. I'm gonna go ahead and get the camera out and uh, I'm gonna start shooting these. So it's gonna be really great. All right, so I settled upon doing my 75 to 300 millimeter lens here. That's a, that's a small telephoto focal length there. And it just works out perfectly for extracting all the different details uh, amongst the, uh, the tree line and everything um, just facing before me here. And uh, so I've been picking apart different uh, sycamore trees um, as they just are dotting the landscape, like I said before, and uh, just trying out something with that. Um, it's a little bit tricky, though, if I don't want to include the giant Morrow Bridge, which is one of the highest bridges in Ohio there, as you can prominently see stretched across the, uh, the frame there. Um, that just means that I have to crop in even more. And the problem is also is most of the color in the trees, um, at least the deciduous leaves that are still standing on the trees, are all the way in the lined up on the landscape, basically parallel with that Morrow Bridge there. So, I mean, it's not like a really difficult thing, but just means I have to be extra mindful of the images I take and uh, basically how I take them. Um, so I've been trying out messing out with that. Um, sticking around the F11, F14 range just because I have so much depth of field here. Um, I haven't been focus stacking. I may try some of those now um, if I want to incorporate the entire landscape here um, and then shooting at about ISO 500 or so. 
Um, but honestly, it's really overcast light, so I do need to push and slide that ISO number a little bit higher uh, to let in more light, of course, into the camera sensor. Um, and then about opting for a shutter speed of about 60th of a second, um, which is just fast enough. There's lots of trees and stuff moving um, here up in the foreground here by the overlook, but those aren't going to be in the frame because it is a telephoto uh, perspective I'm doing this at. Um, so really you can't see the, any of the movements of the leaves and the trees um, far off in the distance, even though I'm zooming in on them. So I feel like the motion blur is really going to be something I can neglect a little bit more with those kind of shots. Um, but yeah, I've just been trying those out here. I'm using a polarizer to enhance the color a little bit more. And uh, yeah, so I've been really enjoying those uh, so far. And so I'm going to keep going here and hike a little bit more and combat the winds here as I record audio, which isn't fun. But um, so far I've been really enjoying my time here and I'm going to keep along the trails here. Uh, for what time I still have here as well. So I will talk to you here in a bit. That might have just happened for a while now. This is a very windy day, so I wouldn't be surprised. Jeez. Maybe I should focus more on where I'm putting my feet at. So I've been wondering more about the location as I go along and the historical significance. Um, so about 2,000 years ago, uh, the Hopewell Indians uh, basically constructed these earthworks, um, not really as places of fortification, um, which, you know, is as I learned now is, you know, the, the fort in the name of Fort Ancient. Actually, uh, it's not really truly a fort. It's basically just like a dugout ditch with some uh, some walls around surrounding the pit, basically. And so these uh, these mounds and everything, these earthworks, were used uh, mainly as uh, ceremonious uh, occasions and as social gathering areas. Um, so that's about it. So, but then basically, uh, when mysteriously the Hopo uh, tribe basically disappeared um the four ancient people as they became known were the next ones to inhabit it so they didn't create them but they did uh use them uh later on and you know many years after the other tribes basically went away disappeared uh, mysteriously so some just a neat stuff as i'm learning as i make my way meandering through all these wood ravines are quite striking especially i think this time of year might be the best time of year just to see this place um but you know maybe that's with a little bias because i haven't seen i haven't seen it in winter or spring but i bet spring would be quite beautiful because if i had to guess there'd probably be tons of trilliums just you know surrounding this entire hillsides and these these all these dales and everything so i wouldn't be surprised at least but but yeah this is just so beautiful just these old mature woodland here in uh, southern ohio um, it's just very, very beautiful. And the hiking is actually quite strenuous once you, you know, get off the paved part, <laughs> of course, you know, and start making your way around the trails. Um, there's some quite hilly sections. Um, like I just got off the uh, half a mile Eagles Trail, um, which is surrounding the Little Miami Scenic Trail, which is a bike path, the bike path that I came from <laughs> originally when I found this place by accident. Um, but yeah, uh, so it was quite hilly on the way in and out of that trail um, after I left the scenic overlook. Uh, that first one that I was just at taking the photos at. So, but yeah, it's been it's been great, great so far. The lighting, you know, now all of a sudden the clouds are completely covering the sky, which means you know now it's nice soft diffuse light, um, no harsh shadows or anything of that sort. And now I'm on the Earthworks Trail and out of breath and South Overlook. So we're gonna go that way as we meander throughout these this beautiful natural monument. This uh, 
memorial um, just everything it's beautiful it's a nice historical place and so i'm gonna go up to this overlook over here and see what it looks like here so talk to you in a bit So I'm gonna keep this real quick because it's like the wind is getting unbearably uh, freezing and frigid, uh, and plus it's just making them really recording really difficult. But um, so I'm here at the South Overlook here uh, finally, and uh, the, the, the view is actually a lot better. I think honestly, the color is much more apparent in the mid ground as well. Um, the Morrow Bridge is you know obviously non-existent in this side of the uh, the South Fort over here on the Earthworks, um, but just the entire view and everything is just very very beautiful. Um, lots of different trees, a variety of different colors and everything uh, dotting the whole landscape. Um, the only other exclusion besides the bridge really is the, the whites of the top of the uh, sycamores. There's only one prominent one uh, there in the midground, and uh, so that's just one thing to either include or exclude using the small telephoto lens as I'm doing uh, still with these kind of images. But uh, once again, just pretty much the same thing I did with the first overlook over there. Uh, I'm just picking apart different details um, in the scene and uh, just drawing basically the viewer's eye to different parts of the color. Um, there's actually one prominent right over here that uh, lines up that takes you out. There's that one brightest looking tree right in the dead center in the overlook. It takes you up and out in almost like this right angle. And so I've been doing that as like a nice kind of framing device basically um, that's been working pretty well I think. Um, so using a polarizer once again and keep my settings pretty consistent with how they were at the other overlook. Um, so. I think it's gonna be it for the day. Um, I don't think I'm gonna be taking other, any other shots um, simply because it is really windy as you can tell. And so I think it's gonna be it for the day, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and hike the rest of it, uh, going to the mid fort and the north fort, and then we'll call it quits for the day. So I'll see you in a little bit. going to conclude my visit here to uh, Fort Ancient. Um, I hope you really enjoyed the video. Um, the weather's been kind of like on and off tricky and difficult to uh, you know both meter and expose for images and just record this video in general but um, I hope you still enjoyed it. I would highly recommend this place at least visit once maybe twice or even more of course you know because um, you might see something different in all different kinds of seasons but um, I really enjoyed my time here and uh, you know, getting some photographs of the uh, both scenic overlooks and some, you know, small telephoto landscapes, uh, which I think are going to look pretty awesome uh, here with all the peak fall foliage as well. So thank you so much for watching, everyone. This has been Fort Ancient Earthworks in Nature Preserve. Until next time, make sure to get out of here. Thank you.